You know, Brian, usually when I describe something as fire, I'm normally speaking metaphorically, but this case, in this case, it's both. It really is both. Uh, And you can almost say it's everywhere. For real. Uh, What's up, people? Uh, Welcome back to another episode of Channel Chasers. As always, I am your host, Jay from Mr. Jay's Reviews, and joining me as always is my co-host, my friend, uh, my partner in crime, but hopefully not arson. I mean, I don't know your life, Brian. Um, uh, Brian Kersey, how you doing tonight, Brian? Hello, peoples. I'm all right. Let's talk about some drama. Yeah, so we seem to be alternating between light, heavy, light, heavy uh, these past few episodes, and uh, we're back on to heavy. Um, so... If you can't tell by the title or thumbnail from either the, um, you know, wherever you're watching it, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever podcast platform, or the YouTube version, um, we are going to be talking about Little Fires Everywhere, the mini series from Hulu starring Kerry Washington and Reese Witherspoon. So, yeah, um, I, I, you know, we had heard about this one a while back when it was first announced, and I was like, oh yeah, it's Reese Witherspoon and Carrie Washington? Of course I'm going to watch it. Um, and, you know, I was initially going to cover it week to week, but then I just got busy with everything that was going on during the week, and then, you know, the thing happened. Um, and Pandemic. So, and you can so, say that word. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure, because, like, I, I know it's fine on, like, you know, the podcast stuff, but, like, we also put this on YouTube, so it's like... Well, it's YouTube, you can say pandemic, you just can't say... The other one, okay. The C it. words. But, yeah, so, um, I decided to wait until the, 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 ser- the, the series wrapped, and so, like, I waited until the week of the last episode, and once that dropped, I, like, watched through the whole thing, um... You know, um, Elizabeth was watching it as it was going on, uh, as it was dropping, and, you know, she was telling me how good it was, and, um, you know, I would, you know, we, we usually, we, we're usually, we're usually on the phone at least, like, uh, like, once every night, and, like, I'll, I'll be listening to her, re- like, I'll be listening to her reactions to certain scenes, uh, like, but she'll have the volume down, so I can't hear the dialogue, and so, it's just, so I'm just like, okay, interesting interesting and then it gets to the point where i'm watching it and like she's listening to me react and she's just like yep i was here i was here oh man there, there's and there's one particular point that we uh, that you get to like and um and this was like in the towards the end and like it was like four o'clock in the morning when i was watching that episode and like I got so loud. I, thankfully, I didn't wake anybody up, but like I was yelling at my TV. Uh, we'll, we'll get to there when we get there. Uh, but uh, yeah, so um, for those of you who do not know what Little Fires Everywhere is, it is a drama miniseries um, on Hulu, again, starring Reese Witherspoon and Carrie Washington, uh, set in the late 90s. And uh, it is basically kind of a clash between two families in a way without getting into like spoilery details and uh, we get to see kind of different parenting styles and different fa- family dynamics and how those different family dynamics clash. I believe it is based upon a book. It is based on a book. And I really want to read this book because like if the book is half as good as the show like man, that's going to um... be a good book. And uh, is this based upon real events? I don't think so. I think it's just a book. I don't think the book was based on real events. All right, because the ending credits kind of made me think that. Why? Did it say something about the end credits? No, just uh, photos. Oh. No, I don't, I don't think it was based on real events. I, just, I think it was just based on a book. Um but, uh, yeah, so, essentially, we have our main, our, our main, like, kind of inciting incident characters in Pearl and her mom, Mia. They move into this, like, suburban, gated community, 
Oh, well, it's not necessarily a gated community, but it's one of those like high class, like suburban communities uh, called Shaker, and they end up Shaker Heights. Yeah, yeah Shaker Heights. And they end up like um, renting a house from uh, Reese Witherspoon's character mm-hmm. Elena. Um, the uh, one character that, like, I told Brian last week, uh, you know, when we were doing the wrap up for the Nancy episode, but one, the one, ca- like, I have never hated a fictional character more than I've hated her. And Brian, you know, before we get into spoilers, I want to know, like, do you see why? Mm-hmm. Without spoiling, uh, Nega Karen. Nega okay. Karen. Yes. For real. But, yeah. Um, and I apologize for those of you who are offended that we use the K-word, but Brian's white, so that's okay. Yes. <laughs> and that's sarcasm, by the way, for anyone who can't interpret that. Um, but, yeah. So, um, yeah, they end up renting a house from um, Elena, who is Reese Witherspoon's character, who is a uh, journalist slash property manager, I guess. Because she technically does yet yeah, manage, like, you know, she rents out the guest house. They have a guest house. That's how rich they are, y'all. <laughs> they have a guest house. Um, but anyway, mm-hmm. so um, they move in. Pearl ends up starting to make friends with you know, Elena's family, and um, also um, Elena also offers Mia a second job, a a side job, as her house manager, but let's be real, let's call a spade a spade, she hired her to be her maid. Mm Mm-hmm, like to the fact where she was like, no, not house maid, house um, Yeah, house um, manager is what she called it. Manager. Yeah. Like, she, she stumbled, though. Yeah, I know. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's kind of the biggest thing with Elena. Elena, like, if you've ever seen the movie Get Out, Elena is the embodiment of subtle racism. Like, she says things that she thinks are, like, you know, positive and progressive. But really, like, she's trying so hard to hide that she's racist. It's kind of coming out that you're racist. Mm-hmm. Which definitely uh mixes things when her oldest daughter is dating Yeah, a, a, a black boy. Um but also like it's one of the it again it reminded me a lot of Get Out because like even like because her boyfriend Brian even mentions that every time that he comes over to the house, she mentions that she marched with MLK. Like, fam. Okay, I get it. And that her mom did something. Yeah, something about integration of schools here. Like she was responsible for getting the schools integrated, like before any others, like any other like city in the area. But whatever. Um, so yeah, and uh, we get introduced to her family, which is com- uh, Elena's family, which is comprised of herself. Her husband, Bill, played by the awesome Joshua Jackson. And then you've got the oldest daughter, Lexi, who is a straight-up bitch for, like, 95% of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there, there's 5% where she has a turnaround. Um, and we'll get there, because I appreciate the growth. But we'll get there. Um, so there's Lexi, who's, a, like, a total bitch. Then there's Trip. Who is the oldest son? Who you think is kind of he's the normalist one? You know, he doesn't really do anything bad or good. He's just kind of a normal kid. Uh, he does pick on his siblings a little too much. I mean, that's but kind of normal though. Teenager. Like, yeah, I was gonna say that's kind of normal. I fuck with my brothers all the time, and my brothers fuck with me. Like that, that didn't seem anything. That didn't seem out of the ordinary. Like he wasn't particularly abusive like in the way that like Lexi is to Izzy you know it's more of just a like playful jabs at your brother like you know yeah because he he never meant anything malicious behind what he says unlike Lexi towards Izzy so like he never bothered me he was just kind of there he was just he was the most normal of the kids um 
Lexi is like super overachiever. Um, like tries to be mini Elena. Um, she's dating a dude named Brian. Um, the only black boy at the school. Um, the only black kid at the school until Pearl comes. Yep. And then we got then we got uh, Moody, who is the middle child and youngest son. Um, who is he? He's he's like the like quiet, artsy nerd type. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, you think he's okay, and then there's like a, and then there's like an opposite turnaround for him. We'll get to that later. Um, he's very much into Pearl, like, right from the jump. At first, you're like, oh, you know, he just wants to be her friend. It's like, oh, no, he's, he's uh, definitely, he definitely wants more than to be her friend. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, there's that. And then we got our favorite character from this whole bunch. I'm, I'm glad we agreed, Brian. I mean, we normally agree on this type of stuff, but favorite character from this entire fucked up family, um, Isabel, a.k.a. Izzy, um, who is the best. Um, mm-hmm. she, she is the, like, again, um, like Moody, she's artistic, but she's like the rebellious artistic you one thousand percent. If she was allowed to dress the way she wanted to dress, she would be like this emo punk chick. Mm-hmm. Because she gives off that energy, and I love it. Well, uh, she dresses up like that a couple times. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, she's pretty awesome, and also like you know, it's pretty much you know stated from the jump that she's gay. Uh, well. There's talk about. I mean, come the on. They, they straight up put an Ellen poster in her locker. Like, like not Ellen poster, but like the, the the Time article from the '90s when Ellen first came out, and they make fun of the they they do Ellen DeGeneres jokes when she performs in orchestra class. Pretty sure. Yeah, but means. we don't know the full story of. Oh yeah, but that. but but we but we know we we know she's gay and she definitely like gives the like yeah so what I don't give a fuck type of attitude which I appreciate. Um, but she's also simultaneously trying to please her mom. It seems yeah, like in the beginning. Um, definitely in the beginning. Um. And then, and then she realized. Uh, then she comes to the realization that there really is no pleasing her, especially when it comes to her in particular. And we'll get to that. Um, so, as as the story uh, goes along, you know, of course, Pearl begins to bond with that family, um, like you know the Richardson family, and um, like Mia, who is an artist, um, who also works part time at a restaurant as well as part time at the Richardson house. Uh, she ends up making friends with one of her co-workers named BB, who is a Chinese who works at the Chinese restaurant. And she, like, we find out more about her, and then, um, of course, like, um, Mia ends up empathizing with BB's situation. She ends up getting wrapped up in a very messy situation involving BB. And that's kind of the, like, driving force of the entire plot. Uh, Which I will openly admit that I had no clue about BB and the BB thing going into this. Neither did I. Because they they make it think like it's going to be like Big Little Lies, where the whole inciting force is just... Why is this big thing happening? And... Yeah, like, what, well, yeah, who said, like, because, uh, you know, the opening shot of the, the show, the first episode, is the house on fire, right? The, I mean, the show is called Little Fires Everywhere. The house, the big ass mansion house is on fire um, in, in the first, in the opening shot of the first episode. And so you're like, okay, how the fuck did this happen? And, like, you start to think, okay, so it's probably a result of a feud between Kerry Washington and um, Reese Witherspoon. But, like, you find out that really the driving force behind this whole, like, conflict is actually the situation with BB. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. And and then things get even more Yeah, complicated when 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 we get the backstories of both Elena 
and um, of Mia as well. Um, and we can't go into any more further detail about that without getting into spoilers. So this is your official spoiler warning. Uh, anywhere past this point uh, is the point of no return. Uh, we will be <laughs> going into full detail about like the crazy shit that goes on in this show. Trust me, you guys. This is a very well acted, well mm-hmm. shot show. It's going to be raking in all the Emmys, man. Reese Witherspoon and Kerry Washington are both like just Emmy candidates for sure next year for this one. Indeed. Oh, you, you got to watch it. It's really good. Um, but yeah, let's talk about it. So let's focus on the BB stuff real quick. Um, because that's like the main force here, and we can talk about the individual characters uh, after that. So, all right. So the BB thing. So mm. what happens with BB is that BB, unfortunately, uh, because of her like financial situation with work, she couldn't afford to feed her daughter, um, and so you know at one point she ends up like you know honestly doing the responsible thing. And, well, not necessarily responsible because it's in the middle of winter, but, uh, like, she does, mm-hmm. she does the responsible thing for the child's sake and leaves the child at a fire station. Yeah, because, unfortunately, the child, she can't afford formula and the child won't latch on. hmm So. hmm Which happens so, sometimes, but. Yeah. So she ends up, like, you know, giving the child to the fire station so that the fire station can, like, you know, uh, like, set up the baby for adoption. Because apparently that's what she did in the 90s, because that's a lot, that's a lot of, like, 90s stories. Mm -hmm. Anyway, like, like, in the 80s and 90s, apparently that's a very common thing, huh? Well, I think it's just down to the fact that people are, like, it's a safe place. Mm Mm-hmm. With, like, people who are good people working there. Yeah. Trust. Mm-hmm. So, um, she gives up the baby. Now, uh, you know, we fast forward to present day. Um, this, their ba- uh, her baby, Mei Ling, is actually adopted, was actually adopted by um, one of Elena's friends, Linda. And, um, you know, BB is having like kind of not second thoughts but regrets about giving up her baby, right? Um, well, initially she's just sad about it, and mm-hmm. yeah, but th- but then, like, you know, as uh, Mia is working for the Richardson, she overhears about like her how uh, Elena's friend adopted a Chinese baby that was, you know, left at a fire station, and she's like. Oh, I think I know where your baby is. And then, you know, BB is like, oh shit, where's my baby? And then, um, so it ends up leading to, uh, like, Mei Ling's or Mirabella's first birthday. And which, by the way, I do not blame Linda for this, but god damn it, Elena, like, they set up, like, goodie bags. For, you know, yeah, that was birthday. kind of a little insensitive. <laughs> like, dude, <laughs> dude, no. And what what makes it worse is that, like, you know, she's setting these up, and you know, me is helping out, like, set up the party, and like, the, you know, uh, on, on the side, um, you know, what you call it, Elena is setting up the the goodie bags, and like. Terry Washington, like Mia, is looking at her like, oh, do you think that's okay? And she goes, isn't it clever? Like, no. <laughs> like, there's even a whole thing of a scene where someone this? is trying to give them other cookies and there was a mix up with orders. She's like, no, it has to be these cookies. Mm-hmm. Do you think that you can put messages and other cookies? And I'm just like, oh my god, Elena, Elena, Elena I want to punch you so hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so, um, you know, she ended up, of course, uh, Mia ends up finding Mirabella slash Mei Ling, and then, like, she basically hits up BB 
and it's like, all right, here's the address, and then BB calls the scene, and then um, this is how Mia ends up in ra- uh, like wrapped within this whole like chaos. Mm-hmm. Because she like feels empathy. We don't know why yet, but she feels empathy towards um, you know BB. And so she helps pay for her legal fees and she tries to, you know, fight for like a very public custody battle. Um, and that's the basically the main driving plot. All right, so now we'll get back to that when we get to Mia. But um, I, I will say that this was a very uh, muddied situation that. Uh... Yeah. Like before we, we, but yeah, before we, we didn't yeah, even... before we jump, yeah, before we jump into oh. main characters, I I do want to I do want to get that topic out of the way. Um, so, uh, you know, we talked about this off mic, Ryan. Uh, but um, how did you feel about this? Um, like it it took me until the end to really kind of like get my like final stamp on it. But how did you feel about this? Uh Honestly, I felt like this was a situation where nobody was completely right. Mm-hmm. And For sure. That there was a lot of wrong, but in the end, in the end, I felt like she should have gone to Linda and her husband with, mm-hmm. with uh, BB getting visitation rights. Yeah, so... So th- yeah, so this is this is my whole thing. I personally, I feel like, you know, as much as I hate Elena and whatever, Linda did nothing wrong in this situation. No, right? and like, and honestly, we find out why Linda and her husband are so. Yeah, because they've had repeated miscarriages. Well, not and, just a like, miscarriage. Like they at one point don't say it, but they hint with a flashback. That they had a stillbirth. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And that I can say this because we're not monetizing anything, but uh, on YouTube. But that fucks with people. Oh yeah, no, and like you know, she'd almost given up hope, and you know, also like she sees Elena like you know popping out all these kids, and you know she's happy for it, but she's also the just it makes her sad and really envious, and so because that. That was honestly, that was honestly a sad but funny moment when they were oh, yeah, having was, the dinner. Yeah, yeah, that was hilarious. I loved like, that. No, not again. Yep. Can't be. Yep. And that was right when she was going to tell them about the. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, Linda and her husband did nothing wrong in this situation, honestly. Because, like, you know, they adopted her legally. They filled out the proper paperwork. It was just, and... it, it was still in motion, the the adoption. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, like, uh, because you know, like, the, she, like, she had only been given up, like, about a year, like, a few months ago. So, and, like, that process takes a very long time. Like, you know, not to, like go into like full detail about like my life but uh, you know my, my sister and her husband are looking into that and like it's like it takes a year for just the pre-process like a year a year and some change for just yeah because i believe like, that they said that that uh they had her for a year mm-hmm. so yeah like you know they did they did everything by the book and like they did nothing shady and they treated her right like and it's all. It's also not like they were trying to turn her into a white child. Like, I do genuinely believe Linda when she was like, "No, we were gonna make sure she was aware of her culture and be proud of her own, you know, where she." And I from. tried looking for an Asian baby doll, but there weren't any. And it's the nineties. Of course, there weren't any. Like, I'm not mad at you, Linda. Like, Linda did nothing wrong here. Um, no, and the husband. The husband just seemed like. Typical suburban dad husband. Uh, Mm -hmm. Caring a lot about the game. But I will say that there is one moment where uh, if this if this was real life she, Linda definitely would be holding him accountable for one moment at the end. Where her instincts kicked in and he said no. 
Yep. Because, yeah, she should uh, he should have listened to her. he should have listened to her there, um, for sure. Uh, but yeah, so like I'm I'm I definitely think that BB was in the wrong here because her because and you know this is no disrespect to BB. I was raised by I was raised by immigrant parents, but you know they managed to find it, like were able to like give me a really good life and provide for me, and you know they sacrificed and they worked hard and they did a lot. And I'm sure, you know, given time, maybe BB could have done that. But honestly, given her situation, she just couldn't. And she made the smart decision by considering the child first and letting her have a better life. Yeah. And like this isn't, and this isn't even a race thing. This is just kind of how life life is, man. Like the fact that she has white parents now just means that she'll get more opportunities because that's just how life is, especially in America. It's, it it sucks, but it's true. Like, honestly, she was being entirely selfish this whole time, and like, I feel bad for her, but I don't empathize with her. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I definitely feel like she was wrong in all of this. Um, yeah, because they openly admitted that. Uh... She is earning the same salary as when she was. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, when she couldn't afford formula. When... Exactly. Um, and also, like, and Linda, Linda and her husband were super nice people. So I honestly feel like if she hadn't just barged into their house and she could, like, she had, like, a polite, formal conversation where she was like, hey, so I am Mirabella's mother. Um, I, I'm so thankful for what you've done for my baby and I want you to keep doing this for my baby but I would also like to um, just kind of be there whenever she has any questions about like you know where she comes from uh, or you know anything like that um, and I would, lo- I would like to at least see her and you know be able to teach her about you know her culture because I mean n- not that you can't but I, I would have a better you know, understanding of that. Yeah, and I feel like maybe BB would have gone that route if not for a little someone whispering in her ear. Yeah, Mia took it a little far. Um, and you know, I, I I do I do like that they went this angle because I kept thinking that like Reese Witherspoon's gonna be the bad guy, Carrie Washington's gonna be the good guy, but no, both of them suck. Mm-hmm. Both of them suck. Um, uh, the only quote unquote good guys Joshua were a Jackson, couple kids. Bill, he was the only, were uh, Bill and a couple kids. Oh yeah, Bill and Trip, Bill and Trip, and Brian. Well, uh, Bill Pearl Trip wasn't. And... Oh yeah, Pearl too. Pearl, yeah, Bill, Trip, and Izzy. Pearl, and Brian. What about Izzy? Oh yeah, Izzy too. Of course, Izzy. Izzy's the best. She she rises above everybody. Um. But yeah, so now let's talk about the kids. So let's start, let's, let's go from least favorite to favorite. So we're going to start with Lexi. All right. Which, um, just, this is a funny note that I found out beforehand behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Lexi is actually the first name of uh, Pearl's actress. That's funny. Uh, but yeah, Lexi, Lexi Richardson. I hated her. I hated her so much. She was the absolute worst for a long time. Um, she was just so like tone deaf. I think is the right word to use. Um, but when I realized it's not her fault, it was because she was raised by Elena, and that's mm-hmm. how like that's how she grew up. So. There's no other way she could have been. I, I understood it more. I was like, okay, I'm not excusing it. But you're just a stupid teenager, so I feel like you have room to grow. Your mom and the is funny, in her ways. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing is, is um, you think at the beginning that Lexi is going to be the child that's most like Elena. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. But you find out it's actually somebody else who we'll talk about next. Um, mm-hmm. And like, and um, you know her relationship with Brian. I, I, you know, I, you know, Brian himself, our Brian, um, you know, th- this Brian, 
uh, was like uh, kind of questioning at points the like whether she really cared for him and like was just kind of using him or whatever for like clout. But I genuinely believe that she did love Brian and like she went through a lot with her whole abortion and everything, that whole saga. Mm hmm. Like, I can understand why she was like that to Brian. And, um, you know, uh, when she said what she said to him, I felt like that was more of a in the moment, I'm going to say, like, the worst thing I possibly can to hurt you because I'm angry right now. Not at you, but at myself. Mm hmm. And so she basically says, you know what, fine. I'll just find someone who's a better fit for me. She didn't say that, dude. Oh, what did she say? Elena said that. Oh, Elena said that. Um, oh. What she just said was um, he was so in it about her and her image and about the truth getting out that uh, she was about to tell Brian about the abortion. But then she just told him, get out. Mm -hmm. She told him that I want you to leave. Yeah. So he left. Mm -hmm. And it was clear, though, that their relationship was ending because he, it definitely hit me when he said one thing. I did love you. Yeah, that was, yeah. Past tense. Yeah, that hit hard. That hit hard. Also, like, I felt really bad for Brian because Brian was trying to help Pearl out because, you know, he was the only black kid in school for a long time. So he understood he understood how that felt. And like when he was trying to explain this to Lexi, she's like, he's like, do you not get it? And she's like, oh, no, no, I don't see color. He goes, but do you not get what it's like for me as a black person? She's like, what do you mean? No one, no one's like that. It's like, you don't get it. You don't see it. You don't have to go through what I go through. You don't have to put on. You don't have to be extra polite. You, no one looks at you when you go through a store. No one follows you when you go shopping. Like, I'm, I've been through that shit. And I, I'm on crutches, man. What the fuck am I going to steal? Um, <laughs> but, um, but, which the fact that this show actually does go into it and she's like, you're right, I don't. But also, you don't get where I am. Yeah. But it, she's it, so focused on her image and worried about what her mom would say that, that she, she doesn't does, tell she, him. Yeah, and I feel like, you're, and you know, in my head canon, I think she, like, after the events of the show, she does tell him and they, and I, I hope they get back together because, like, I think once they, once she opens up and tells him about this, I think they can actually grow and be a good couple. Mm-hmm. And she had some huge growth at the end when she realized what a monster her mom was. And that now, she what she did in response to that wasn't the best that she could have done. But, you know, it made for, like, the coolest Peter Griffin family guy moment. Because they did the thing. In the title. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I, like, I, I, I dug it. I, I dug it. Um, she, she had a very good character arc, even though I hated her for a good majority of it. All right, so mm -hmm. now let's go, let's go up the ladder of least favorite to favorite. And, uh, let's go to Moody. All right, so Moody is... He's kind of the opposite surprise, right? Like, at first you like him because you vibe with him because you know he seems like the lonely, artsy, shy nerd. You think you think that he's just like a mini version of his dad, mm -hmm. where you're like, hey, there's going to be one good kid amongst. Well, I mean, there's going to be one good male kid, one good female kid, because you know, evenly split amongst four kids. Yep. But then he meets Pearl, and they start getting to get. They start like hanging out. They start becoming friends, and then like he's clearly more infatuated with her than she. She's looking for a friend. He's looking for a girlfriend. Yep, 
And like, uh, she doesn't connect with him in the same way that she does with Trip. Um, she ends up actually really connecting with Trip, who, uh, you know, um, I, I like, you know, we'll get into this more when we talk about Trip. But like, I really respect Trip because, like, you know, when she when she starts to feel him and she kisses him, he's like, "No, this is fucked up." My brother. Likes well, you. to be fair. Uh, okay, they get pretty far, but he at least no, stops. No. They don't get pretty far. They go all the way, and then he has hesitation. At least she had hesitation. <laughs> you gotta give him that. You gotta give him that credit. Like, yes, I thought he was gonna be the guy who would have just, you know, kept having sex with Pearl. But he has integrity, damn it. Well, also, after the fact, he realizes this was her first. So, yep. uh, fuck. I also appreciate that, like, they were realistic about that scene because mm-hmm. he's just a teenager. They're, <laughs> without getting too graphic, uh, you know, at that age, it's not going to be that long. It's not going to take that long. No, but also, um, they do use protection, and they comment on that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so, Moody, after finding out about Trip and Pearl, he turns into a real nice guy, if you catch R-slash my name. slash nice guy. A real fedora man. Uh, a milady. <laughs> he, like... He, like, he, you know, and, you know, you see some subtle signs of that because, like, he buys her a bike. And at first you're like, oh, that's sweet. That's a nice gesture. But then you're like, oh, he buys her a bike. And now he thinks that, you know, she's supposed to be his girlfriend now. And it's just like, no, dude, you were just being, you were, you know, just because you're nice. And then, girl, and then that thing to her attention. with the movie, mm-hmm. which I don't know if you've ever heard of that movie before. What was the movie? It was uh, Before Sunrise. Nope, never heard of it. Oh, um, it is part of a trilogy. Um, before Sunrise, Before Sunset, and Before Midnight, or something like that. The, anyway, it's the Before trilogy. And uh, they, they, especially the first one, are like considered to be like, some of the most romantic like relationship related semi indie films of all time like interesting so uh there was a reason why he kept wanting her to see that movie because it is a romance movie yeah uh but she she definitely wasn't into him and then like once uh, she, she became friends with Lexi she just ditched him altogether which honestly was a bit of a dick move on her part but you know Mm-hmm. Also, like you can't be mad at her for like wanting female friends. Yeah, because um, they don't really put it together that up until this point, for the first what sixteen years, fifteen, sixteen years of her life, yeah, Pearl. Her has, only friend was her mom. Her only person that she knew was her mom. Yep. Because they said it. Uh, she's what? A, uh, what was she, a sophomore? Yeah, yeah, sophomore. And yet she had already been to three different schools? hmm That's not a lot of time to set roots and become friends with people. Yeah, especially, I mean, like, you know, it, and you know, I, I also appreciate the principal was like, oh, so you're a military brat. Because, you know, that's a logical conclusion. And just like, no, her mom's just weird. Yeah, my mom's an artist. All right, that doesn't explain anything, but okay. <laughs> uh, well, because but... that's the thing, though, is when Pearl says that, she thinks that's a normal thing. Oh, I know, I know. No, 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 no. I'm, I, I was just imitating the principal. Cause, like... I know, and I was just saying that. Furthering the idea, talking about the show. Yeah, because, 
Um, that's kind of a parallel and like the, the clear difference between the Richardson family and the, uh, you know, Mia's family. Uh, what, what, what's the fake, what's the fake last name? Uh, who? What's Mia's fake last name? The, um, it's her brother's name. What's her brother? Warren. Name? Warren. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The Warren family. Um, so like the Warren family is very open and loving and like honest about feelings, but very secretive about everything else. Whereas the like Richardson family, they're not open about feelings and like pe- their own problems, but they're honest about their opinions and they don't really hide things from each other for the most part. Um, and Pearl kind of wants that, right? She wants that type of connection and that's why she gravitates towards that family in particular um and so now we move to trip so yeah trip had some interesting development because like i said he showed integrity when he didn't have to Mm -hmm. um and like even after that happened he goes no 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 we can't see each other anymore like my my brother liked you and she goes oh i don't but i don't like him she goes oh you don't like him okay cool and he's and he's still every time that they're out is like i'm a little hesitant about this but i'd like you like i'd like you like you so Mm -hmm. and he's really nice and like he genuinely cares about her and he cares about everybody in that family, man. Like, Trip is the one that's the closest to a mini Joshua Jackson slash Bill. Yeah, and when that end thing happens with him, you can tell, you can tell though, that uh, that may be a misstep, but that's just because he just found out that his mom kicked out his girlfriend, basically. And other stuff, that which we'll, we'll talk about right about now. Yeah. We're talking about Izzy. Holy shit. This poor baby. This Mm -hmm. poor baby. This poor baby. Izzy. Because each time I think I know where they're taking her, they go worse. Mm Mm-hmm. Because, like, okay, so, you know, we, at first, you know, you think she's just kind of the rebellious, the rebellious kid of the bunch. She's the, the 90s punk. Okay, cool. Um, and also, you think, okay, she's into girls. Interesting. And then, um, and then they have this whole thing about something happened between her and her ex best friend. And, and then it's like, and, and it's what like, I initially thought—I don't know about you—but when I heard that, what I initially thought happened was that uh, she kissed her and that same. she rejected exactly, her. Exactly the same. That's exactly what I thought. That she kissed her and then like they stopped being friends because they like she didn't reciprocate. And but no, it gets it's worse. It turns out that they were secret girlfriends for a whole year, and then they went to a party together, like a seven minutes in heaven party, and that the, that she didn't even want to go to. Yeah, and then the bottle ends up landing on her best friend uh, when she spun it. And so they're like, like, you know, Rob, you got to do it. You got to do it. She even, like, jerks at it, like, no. Well, obviously, no, but. Yeah, but but then, like, the party goers, like, encourage her to do it. And then so, like, they go in there and it's like, well, we don't have to do anything if you don't want to. And then, like, you know, they end up they end up making out. Because that's when we find out they've been together Mm -hmm. for a while, and she's like, well, you like to do it in a parent's house? And it's like, what? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, when your parents are, yeah, it's like, it's like, why, why are we making out in front of a, in, in a closet with with a bunch of strange with a bunch of strangers watching? It's like, oh yeah, so you just like you so you just like to do it with uh, when your parents are downstairs, huh? And it's just like, oh, 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 it's like this now. Unfortunately, so they, though, because yeah. it's teenagers and idiots and and uh, the 90s, two girls and the and the nineties and the nineties and two girls, they're like, ooh, we're gonna cut ooh. the. Yeah, we're gonna like cut the crack. seven minutes early so that we can catch them in the act. Mm-hmm. And so that say so they open the door, they're making out, and then they're they're cheering and also like wooing. But then like, uh, oh, what what is her? Is her name like Heather or something? Um, 
Yeah, no, it, I think it's Heather. I I forgot what it is. Alexis. But um, some. But but her girlfriend pulls away and is like, yuck. No, she like basically molested me. And I was, she used the word molested. That's yes. what got me. Yes. If that and was, I was bad. Like, oh no. Oh no. Poor Izzy. And Izzy just ran away. And it's like they haven't been friends ever since. And it makes the the like interactions that they've had before in the show all that Yeah, they hurt even more. Like, like when she like she she even talks to her, they like meet in the bathroom and she's like, Why aren't we friends? anymore mm-hmm. she's like you know why and and uh, you know they even have a sweet interaction with like the whole cabbage patch doll thing and this is um, like this is in modern time yeah like they have a, a 20 it's like 20 years ago not that long ago no i'm what i meant was um the cabbage patch scene doesn't happen in a flashback yeah. it happens oh i know after, that's modern time after yeah she yeah, says yeah, the that's... the whole accuses her and they have a sweet moment in the in the basement but then yeah, yeah and yeah and then I yeah I have faith in her for like half a second to like you know finally stand up for her and be like yeah and then she's like who who even has cabbage patch dolls in high school? Oh fuck off you you you, you had one opportunity I gave you one chance and you blew it. You um but yeah so it, yeah, it gets it just it gets worse with her, and like you know, like the kids at school are just mean about it. They they plaster the time article about Ellen coming out, and they make Ellen jokes all throughout whenever she's performing. Um, Which as, I like, hate to say this, but part of me did chuckle. I'm not gonna lie, those, those, those they were pretty funny jokes. Well, like especially at the moment with Elena, where uh, they're at the table and it's like kids call her Ellen. Why? Because she's funny? Because she's funny? <laughs> um, and he just no. looks at her like, no, nah, mom. Yeah. No, and like, but like the, the dude, and this is what really solidified my hatred for Elena, is when, like, you know, she acts all progressive about, like, black people and shit, but then the second her, we, the possibility of her daughter being gay comes into the equation, it's like, oh, no, 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 she just needs to spend time with Carl. Mhm. Mhm. But and also one other thing that goes to show you that I just realized about Moody's character is, at first you think Moody is like boosting up Izzy because he's supportive brother, but then you realize that he's only doing that for selfish reasons because he doesn't want to be alone in the family and sees her as. Like one of the same people. Yeah, because oh no, he kind of sees her as the other outcast. Yeah, like, you know. Yeah, because like yeah, Trip is athletic and don't stuff leave like that. me alone. Mm-hmm. But like and and like, oh my god, it get it gets even worse. And like I I started to realize other things about it too. So like we find out that like, um, Izzy, which by the way, like. You know, Reese Witherspoon's character, Elena, never calls her Izzy. It's always Isabel, and she hates it. Um, Because everyone in the house has a nickname. Lexi, Moody, Trip. But she has to be Isabel. Mm -hmm. She just wants to be called Izzy. That's all she wants, but she can never give that to her. Um, That one thing. And, like, uh, so we find out through flashbacks that Isabel was unplanned, right? And of that, like, it really fucked with Elena because it messed with a lot of her plans. And, you know, also, um, Isabel was a pretty difficult baby. And so, you know, she kind of had a little bit of resentment towards her. And it festered and it developed into this hatred that they had back and forth in modern times. But also, 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 I didn't, I didn't realize this until I was talking with Elizabeth afterwards, but this made me realize something about, like, Elena's personal schedule. So we notice that she's super OCD about her schedule, right? And she schedules the days that her and Bill have sex 
so that she doesn't get pregnant again. Oh. That's why. Because of Izzy. Yeah, and uh, before we get to the big moment, there is another moment where uh, they're in the car and she picks her up after the whole doll, cabbage back doll incident, which Izzy... Love you, but that wasn't your best moment. Yeah, that that is a, like she she didn't fully understand the situation. Like I'm 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 gonna I'm let that go, Izzy. But um, they have an argument where Elena says being your mom is hard. Yep. And she, yeah, she, and, yeah. She goes. Sometimes I wish I wasn't your mom. Yeah. And and you're like, whoa! How could yeah. someone say that to their own? Kid, it, it, it yeah, and then she, and then she kid. says something worse later. And then she says something worse later. And let me talk about that. So I saw that particular scene at five o'clock in the morning. And I was on the phone with Elizabeth and she knew what was happening. She was waiting. She was waiting. And it happened. And I legit, I shit you not, Brian. I, I said, wait, what? I yelled at my TV. Wait, what? And I rewound the scene. To make sure I heard correctly, I turned on the subtitles to make sure I was hearing this correctly. And I like I had like a freak out like anger tantrum. I was the complete opposite. I was just in total shock. Like, wait, what? And then before I could recover from that, other things started happening. But yeah, so let me let me let me paint the scene for you guys. So Pearl and Izzy get really close. Not just because we find out that um not Pearl, um Mia and Izzy get real close. Not just because we find out that actually um Mia is at the very least bisexual, if not full on gay, because well, the only times we've seen her we the have... only times we've seen her with dudes is uh, to get what she needs. Um, so. there was one time in the car. But if you look at if you look at that scene, there's a there's food on the counter. So I think she fucked the dude so that he could buy the food. Maybe, but still, uh, doing that when your baby's right next to you. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. She sucks. But anyway, uh, so, but yeah, so, so they're so bonding yeah, over like, that. Yeah, so, like, yeah, so, you know, not just that, but also because Izzy is also very artistic and, you know, obviously me as an artist. Uh, and so when Elena kicks out Mia and Pearl, Izzy starts to freak out. And Izzy starts yelling at her and she goes, you know, Mia was the one thing, that, the one good thing that I had in my life. You know, I wish... That she, I, I wish I had a mom. Yeah, because they a mom that a mom before that you get to me. that, dude. They mm-hmm. they go back and forth, like it's not just one thing. It's like Elena actually says, "I know you're mad because you had a crush on her," and that's what pissed me off. Like that, like she, she starts off with that. Like, no, I, I didn't like, have a crush on her. She was one person who cared about me. The person I was really with was, and she says her best friend. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. She, 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 she goes. She goes. I didn't have a crush on her, Elena. No, Mia was just the one person who actually cared about me. She was the one person who actually listened and wanted to get to know me as a person, as an actual fucking human being. And she goes. You want to know who my fucking girlfriend is? My girlfriend was April for a goddamn year. Yeah, and that's when we find out how long their relationship was. Yep. And then she start, and then she starts to, and then Elena starts to shout back, and then she says the worst mm-hmm. thing: no, mo- no real mother would ever say this to any of their children. Well, um, I, no real mother should. There are cases where people. Well, I mean, obviously, but. Uh, no shit, Brian. Like I, I thought about it. there. There are serial. There are parents of serial killers that still say they love. They acknowledge that their kids have done horrible, horrible things, but they still love 
their kids. Think about that. Yeah, but then she says the. And yeah, then she says, "I would. I, I wish I never had you in the first place." And I just, <laughs> my jaw dropped, and I was like, "Wait, she didn't say that. There's no way she actually said well, that." To the point, and it was so jarring that it is like, "All right, bet," and leaves and. No, 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 and see, and, and this leads to, like, the big character revelation for Lexi, because, like, you know, Trip, Moody, Lexi, they all hear that, and they're just like, what the fuck? And then, like, you know, Izzy's like, bet, she starts packing up her shit, and she go, and, like, Lexi's like, no, mom, mom, she's leaving, mom, you gotta stop her, mom, And she's, what are you doing? She's like, let her go. Let her chase Mia. They deserve each other. It's like, Mom, no! You can't just... Mom! And and then, that's when Lexi's like, Yeah. You think uh, she's and, the yeah. big fuck up? Yeah, and then yeah, and then Lexi drops the whole abortion thing, and she goes, and then, you know, she's like, I'm not perfect, Mom! And then Elena just roars back, Yes, you are! No, I'm not! Yo, that moment, <laughs> that was so good, because, like, they... How they were able to mirror each other like that? Mm-hmm. That was awesome. Like this job does a really good job at finding kids that look and act like their parents. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so and and then th- and this is when it happened. This is when we get the title clicks together. Because Lexi then is like, "Fuck this nah, shit." Fuck, she's like, "No, nah, fuck this shit." And she she talks to her brother. She goes. Do you want? Do you want to end up like her? Well, at first she starts do doing it by herself. Yeah, yeah, and then they start. They try to stop her. Like she takes the can of gasoline that Izzy had, and she was where Izzy was initially going to do this, and then they stop Izzy. But then Izzy just dipped, and so now Lexi's like, "Nah, fuck this." And then you know, Trip and Moody are like, "Lexi, what the fuck?" And she goes, "No, wait, listen to me. Do you want to end up like her? Do you want to end up like her?" And like get rid of all these people that actually care about us do you want to just live up to her expectations or turn into her bitter angry and alone i'm not doing that fuck that this house it represents all of that Hmm. burning this motherfucker to the ground and they do which uh and like the and and like it brings forth the but like both the literal title and like the metaphorical title the little fires everywhere are the little things that like the all these little microaggressions that like elena like has built up not just with mia but with her kids which also uh just little side micro thing um when this all happens trip is the first one to be like okay she's a bitch but we don't want her to die so yeah, he, like, he uh, goes to get the mom, <laughs> and the mom literally has her hands around her head, like la la la, like having a mental breakdown, kind of. Yeah, and he goes, "Mom, the house is literally on fire. We have to go." And she's just like, "What? What?" Oh man, poor Joshua Jackson. <laughs> this man. He just he just went to go get some cigarettes. Like he just went for a drive. He just went to go cool off after all the bullshit that his wife put him through about like almost cheating on him with her ex. Which um, one other thing that goes to show you the micro stuff about this show. You can see it. There is a scene where he tries to run into the house and the firefighter stops him. Yep. Because he thinks that his family's in there. Yep. And then, uh, but yeah, so now, now that we've talked about the Richardson family, let's kind of quickly address the, 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 uh, the, 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 the Warren family. I was like, what is their fucking fake last name? Um, so yeah, we find out in the flashback about Mia, and this explains why she empathizes with BB. So Mia went to art school and she, could not afford art school. Well, she and... could until they did what colleges do and mess you over and raised tuition. 
Yep. And so she's like, well, fuck, I can't, I want to continue art school because this will will lead to some big opportunities for me. And plus, if I drop out, like, you know, mom and dad are going to look at me funny. But I need $12,000. Where the fuck am I going to get $12,000? And then, like, this random guy just kind of approaches her on the street like, excuse me, I know this is weird. But you look so much like my wife. I, can, I, can I talk to you for a second? And he approaches her that, about being... That was so weird. Um, right? I thought he was going to rape her, if I'm being honest. Well, they had been... The way that they had been framing that scene in the nightmares, they made it look like it was going to happen. And I mean, yeah, I hate, I, I hate to like, say this, but uh, the fact that they did get a... Uh, Relatively known TV act, good looking TV actor to play the dude. I thought maybe they were going to go somewhere heavy with him. Because this yeah, guy's I, from I Grey's thought, Anatomy. I, yeah, I, I, I legit thought he was going to rape her. Mm-hmm. Um, and that we would find, because like I, I kept thinking, because with the, how, with how the Nightwares went, that like, oh yeah, Pearl's the product of rape. That's why she has to run all the time. That makes sense. But no, actually, like, we find out that like Pearl is Mia's biological baby, but she technically was supposed to give her to this couple that couldn't have kids. Um, mm-hmm. and, Which, and, given the fact that this at that time was the eighties, mm-hmm. they, funnily enough, had a literal turkey baster. Yep. That was very weird. Yeah, it was and definitely this also super weird. brings in um, Mrs. Ryan because it was the Ryan family. Yeah, the Ryan family. And yeah. uh, Mrs. Ryan, who is played by Les Tennant from Sleepy Hollow, and she's an awesome actress. And is I liked her. She. Her and her husband seem yep. a little eccentric, but very nice. Yeah, but so, like, you know, Mia's like, okay, you know, I'm desperate for money. I'll, I'll do it. Um, she ends up, you know, falling in love with her mentor figure. Mm-hmm. Um, who is a woman. Um, Matter of fact, she's Princess and then, Tiana. And then, uh, like, she, she, you know, does the whole surrogacy thing. She goes back to her family, kind of explains the whole situation. Um, her family is ashamed. That, like, but she's carrying somebody else's baby instead of having her own. But the thing, before that, though, um, her brother finds out when he comes to visit. Yep. Also, her brother is played by our man, Aubrey Joseph, a.k.a., you know, Ty... Tyrone Cloak. That's the guy, man. Such a shame. Miss you, dude. Miss you, dude. That show was gone too soon. Yep. That that show was gone too soon. It was so awesome. I hate to see it go. Um, but anyway, he he plays he plays a cool character because he he has the same like initial reaction that his parents do but then he starts to come around to it and uh and he's like all right well if you can't if you know if you're not gonna you know at least you know bring her around like if she's not gonna be around us at least you know show her some good music and give give her something you know he can you know remember mm -hmm. remember me marvin gay remember me from Mm -hmm. play her some marvin gay so that she knows yep but also he he does at one point say something that does come back and kick her and hit her hard is uh, he said that with this artist you're trying to change the world well what if she's the thing to do it referring to mm-hmm. the baby yeah and like she's like how do you know it's a girl it's like just a gut feeling yeah and then it's um when something happens to the brother yeah so the brother ends up tragically passing in a car accident um and when she and, goes home and because and, 
Yeah, and because she's pregnant, the the parents refuse to let her go to the funeral because people are going to ask questions. Yeah, and the only reason why she came home was for the funeral. And that's the only Mm -hmm. way the parents found out. And so she comes back, and so she comes back only to find out, like, the, the shit sandwich just keeps on piling because we find out that her girlfriend had, like, was it leukemia? No, uh, she had ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer. That was... I know it was a type of cancer. Uh, she had ovarian cancer. That was so, so aggressive died. that she only had a few months to live. Mm-hmm. And this was while... This was while Mia was having the baby and on the run being pregnant. Mm-hmm. And so, like, once once her girlfriend dies, she feels like she's alone. And then she realizes she does have someone. She has the baby. And so she does the unthinkable. She writes to the Ryan family and is like, I'm sorry, but I lost the baby. I'm so sorry. I let you guys down. Um, you know, blah, 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 blah. And the Ryans, they understood. They're, they just genuinely wanted to check up on Mia. But, like, then she just you know, starts running. Mm-hmm. And so she's never told Mia about... Uh, she never told Pearl about this whole situation. But then, you know, when the BB thing gets involved and uh, Bill ends up defending Linda's um, like Linda and her family, um, she, um, like you know, Reese uses uh, Reese. Elena uses her journalistic powers for evil. Well, um, first she's just like, I need to figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Because her references were fake, and you know all this other stuff that was genuinely shady. And so, also, like, how is she actually... paying her BB's lawyer? Mm-hmm. And so she. She does some digging. She goes to her ex to get some information. Um, Which, that's a whole and, shit show on its own. Yep. And so, uh, she ends up finding out the whole the full story. She even talks to, like, the, um, you know, the Wright family. The, uh, you know, Mia's biological family. Um, her parents. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, she gets the full story. And then she goes and she tells Pearl... About it because Pearl Pearl is at their house with uh, with Trip and she is like, hey, you know, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Richardson, I'm so sorry that this whole trial thing is like, you know, um, well, you know, getting in the, like getting in between n- our friendship and whatever. Now, um, like, I know this might be my me being an optimist, but I don't. But part of me doesn't think that she planned on telling her. I don't think but so. But then she, See, she said the word that you're a victim in all of this, too. Yeah, yeah. And, and then Pearl had some and questions. You, you, and then she's you like, talk about, like, moments when you're watching it. Would that moment, would that moment where she, where she says, you're a victim, too, and Pearl says, what do you mean by that? I literally paused it, and I was like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, what the hell? What the hell? And I just you, you better I had to pause bitch. for a few minutes, and I was like, "Bitch!" And I was like, "Bitch!" You better not fucking tell her. I was like shrieking into myself, and I was like, "I don't want to bash play. I don't want to bash like, play." I was, I was like, "Bitch!" You better not fucking tell her. And then I mash no, play. No, that, no, that was literally me the whole time. Like I was like, "Bitch!" You better not fucking tell her. You better not. Oh fuck! You're gonna. Oh shit. Um. And so she tells her, and so she, rightfully so, has a meltdown um, mm-hmm. on Mia. Um, and it was heartbreaking, and I'm not going to lie, I might have, might have, like, cried a little bit, because, like, just, damn, the pain in that little girl. Yeah, because there's, she has, because that's the thing. She's never, she's, she's never had a real life. And no, like, un- and un- unlike BB, where BB doesn't have the opportunity to give, you know, Mei Ling the real life, Mia had plenty of opportunity. She could have sold that photo and given. Well, them- also, also, you notice this was a small line. 
mm-hmm. the money that they gave her for the baby. She still had it. Mm-hmm. She still mm-hmm. has it. She put it in a mm-hmm. trust for Pearl. But between that trust money and the painting that the New York Times wanted that was like $30,000? Yep. In the 90s? Yo, she could have she could have provided a very comfortable life for her, a stable life. And also, she could have had a stable life if she had went to the riots. And same with me. And um, all of this because like, and the reason we find out that the reason why she kept moving and wanted to have the stable life was not because they couldn't afford it. It was because she didn't want to stay too long so that the Ryans would find out about it and take Pearl away. Yeah, exactly. Because we even find that out when um, the trial involving BB goes very public. So there are a lot of reporters out there. And uh, there's all these reporters. And so she's like, you want to go somewhere without reporters, right? And just like keeps pushing BB to like not go in front of reporters because she doesn't want to go in reporters because she doesn't want them to find out. Yep. And, and, and she's like one of the star witnesses on BB's side. So of course she's going to be in the public too. Well, she doesn't even realize that at the time, which goes to show you. Yeah. So like, um, Basically, shit accelerates, pun intended, Mm -hmm. when they use an accelerant and light the fucking house on fire. Um, And at this point, you know, like, Pearl and Pearl and Mia have reconciled for the most part. And, And, like, they've even agreed to, like, you know, go to the Ryans and, like, let her meet them. And it's at least one of the sweetest uh, They didn't like, go to the Ryans. They do go to no. the Ryans. Yeah, they that do. That was her parents' house. That was her... Oh, oh, that was her grand... Oh, that was Mia's parents' house? Oh, yeah, because um, she says, we can, be, we can be to New York by morning. And Pearl says, no, I don't want to go to New York. I know exactly where I want to go. And takes her to meet her parents, her grandparents. Oh, got you. Okay, never mind them. I, for some reason, I thought that was the Ryan house. but Because uh, anyway, the Ryans live in New York. Really... They live in the city. Uh, it leads to a really sweet moment where, like, Pearl, we know that Pearl's, like, a writer, and she wrote this poem in her notebook. And it was just about, like, a caged bird, which kind of ties back to Izzy because, like, that's kind of been the metaphor with Izzy the entire time. She even has this whole childhood story about keeping a bird. Mm Mm-hmm. But, but, Um, and that moment was also paired with a very bittersweet moment where Elena realizes that her kids started the fire and that she was dead definitely the cause. Yeah, and and, the, and and then the dickhead firefighter was like, well, you know, Izzy's a troublemaker. Is it Izzy? Where Which, is Izzy I love Bill. Bill's like, she has nothing to do with this. She's a minor. Leave her alone. And he's like, well, she's only a minor, so she won't get in that much trouble. Who started the fire? And then Elena finally like realized that this was her fault, so she takes responsibility. And it leads to a, another bittersweet moment when she finds the little bird, the little toy well, bird that represents cause the she's, bird. Because she realizes she has a moment of clarity. Oh, fuck, I fucked up. Where the hell is my fourth kid? And she goes looking for her, and she thinks that she might be in the house where... Yeah, Mia's house. Mia's house. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, and she starts yelling, Isabel! 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 And the part... That uh, almost got me. Yep. It's when she finds the bird and then she says, Izzy. And it's a boy. And I'm just oh. like, Ooh. 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 Right. Um, and then 
that's just to pose with another oh why what the fuck moment um when you know we got to like you know post trial you know bb doesn't get the baby you know we got to establish that and so like you know linda and her husband they're relaxing they're like finally it's all they're over. in bed and and you know linda wakes up in the middle of the night she goes something's wrong she hears the baby oh, and she yeah hears something in the baby monitor it's like something's wrong she goes no 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 don't worry about it she's been through a lot she's probably just fussy i'm sure she'll go back to sleep just leave it alone we're fine everything's relax. okay it's, everything's going to be everything's going to be okay and yeah sorry buddy it's not <laughs> Um, because BB went and snatched that little baby, and now Mir- now basically the cycle continues. But let's be real here: there's n- like BB is gonna get caught real fast because one, she was adopted by white people. Uh, two, her trial was hella public. <laughs> Three, her name. And records are all out there because her trial was hella public. And four, she lost the trial, so by judge order, she's supposed to be with the adoptive parents. Yeah. But so, she and then it. also um, they want to do you. They want to do you a uh, another rope dope punch in the field with Izzy, where we see Izzy hitchhiking and. Yep, and she gets found by Mia. And then, but, and you're wondering, why does this have a haze to it? This whole scene, why does it have a bit of a haze to it? Yep. And then, Izzy wakes up and she's just on a bus, alone. Yeah. Which, which is yeah. sad, but also, I have heard numerous stories of of people, basically, when they like came out in the nineties, and their parents weren't accepting that they had to run away. And also, it, it parallels it. It kind of it kind of it shows the thing similar, to, like the the difference in white privilege, right? Because like you know, like when the the for, when she was when BB was short a few uh, cents for a formula, they said fuck off. But when I mean, this is a different time when she's on the bus, but when Isabel gets on the bus and she's short she, on fares... The guy she like, wasn't oh, short on fare. No, I'm t- this was, no, this was earlier. Like, at, at the dance. I'm, I'm just kind of ex- pointing out oh. an example of white privilege. You're right. jumping around. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just pointing out an example of white privilege. Like, you remember, you remember at the dance when she left and she just goes onto the bus? She's, on, like, on, she's still in the dress and everything. Oh. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I, I'm I'm just like this is just to point out like the difference between BB and like Izzy's situation, right? Izzy could still kind of skate around like like and be you know pitied because she's a you know she's a little white girl. Mm-hmm. Like there, people are gonna like look at her and be like, "Oh no, no, sweetie, it's fine. Here, go ahead, Asian girl." Asian immigrant who can barely speak English? Fuck off here, chink. Jesus, dude. Like, that's the world, Brian. That's the world. You didn't have to go that far, though. That's the world, Brian. I know, but you didn't need to say it. Well... That's just kind of the, the, the it's the painful truth, Brian, and that's what the show exposes. Had to go there, and I felt like you know, I'm Asian. I can go there. I've I, I've had that word said to me several times, and that sucks. And I've had that experience several Which times. Which sucks. That's just the world. Which sucks sometimes. Sucks all the time. Not all the time. Um, all the time. The world doesn't suck every. No, I'm ta- I'm talking about that situation. You said which sucks, and I was like, it sucks all the time. I was talking about that particular situation. It sucks. Agreed all the on time. that. 
Oh, that's what confused me. I, but then I, I said life. About, like, that situation only sucks sometimes? But then I said that life only sucks sometimes. Oh, you know, I would say, I would say, yeah, life only sucks sometimes, but look at where we are right now. <laughs> it it, it kind of sucks all the time. <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, just a little bit. But anyway, uh, yeah, so it, it leaves you on a pretty big downer but point being. but honestly um, given life it it was kind of satisfying yeah I, I i do like that they're leaving this up to interpretation right like mm-hmm. we don't know we don't know what happens to bb we don't know what happens with pearl and mia we don't know if izzy's gonna go back like but I also like i've heard numerous stories of of people who have had to thrive because coming out of the closet was not mm-hmm. like well received at home. Yeah, especially in the yes. 90s. But yeah, so final thoughts. Uh, yeah, the show was amazing, man. Like It made me feel so many things. And agreed. And unlike unlike a show that we keep comparing this to, because not only Reese Witherspoon but, yeah, and the rich thing, but also kind of the feel, uh, Big Little Lies. Unlike this, I can truly see this as a mini series, and one and done. Yeah, I don't need another season. I do need another season of Big Little Lies because that was unsatisfying. Yes. What was the point? What was the point of having that trial if if fucking Meryl Streep was going to end up having the kids anyway? If you go to fucking jail, you idiot. But anyway, uh. It that's a different uh, podcast, but um, Hollywood. Yeah, so, uh, but just podcast. one last thing, I really liked it, mm-hmm. and it was really good. And it, if it when it does reser- get awards, it will deserve it. But also, side note, Hollywood use these young actors more. Seriously, especially they're great. They're especially funny. the female ones. Mm-hmm. Yep, they were phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. But yeah, real quick, we are really running close to time, so plugs. Uh, what's coming up, and what's, uh, what have you put out this week, Brian? I honestly didn't put out this much this week, because uh, some of my shows that I've been watching, their intermediate scheduling has kind of thrown me off. So... I believe last week all I did was Legends of Tomorrow. And uh, Mm -hmm. unless I can catch up with some of my shows like uh, In the Dark and uh, a couple other ones, that might be the only thing that I come out with this week, Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, Vlair's been a little glitchy, so I haven't been able to upload uh, uh, for, for in the beginning of this week. So I don't really, I don't actually have anything up, but I do plan on putting up reviews of both Dangerous Lies and The Half of It. Both movies were great. Uh, I liked The Half of It better, but that's maybe because Leah Lewis, uh, but it was so fucking cute. Um, but Dangerous Lies was also solid. Uh, gonna try to put reviews of both those movies up. Um, as well as a review for Little Fires Everywhere, because uh, I need to talk about this show because it was just that great. Um, and I'm going to do a review of Dave as well because Dave wrapped up uh, recently and I loved that show. Uh, very solid, very funny first season. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, next week, we are going to be doing One Day at a Time uh, Season 1A because um, with the pandemic uh they had to uh pause the season and so they're just cutting it instead of just cutting it off right here because they were only able to do i think it was seven episodes something uh, like that um, a couple of them no, six. without a live audience yeah they did a last they had to use a laugh track um for the last few um uh, since since they only got about halfway through the season, instead of uh, like just cutting off the season right there, they're just taking a pause and calling it like the mid season. That finale that they did is the mid season finale. 
So we're going to cover season one, uh, 4A of One Day at a Time, uh, which it's a show I love. Uh, we did a previous episode on the third season uh, in the original version of Channel Chasers. Well, we both really enjoy the show. Uh, can't wait to talk about it. Uh, Unfortunately, and... that one was on the YouTube channel. Yep. And so it's, uh, but at least it's a nice bit of yep. levity after this heavy, heavy shit. Uh, so thank God. But uh, hopefully we'll catch you guys next week, and hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Channel Chasers, where we talked about little fires everywhere. Uh, But until next week, Mm -hmm. we'll...